What is up, guys? Welcome back to a, another video. Very glad that you are here. Today's topic is your vision, the power that pulls you forward. Before we jump into today's topic, again, expressing so much love and gratitude for all the support and the feedback from you guys that uh, you've been leaving. I am just truly humbled and grateful that these messages are hitting home with a lot of you guys in the way that they are intended to and hopefully creating awareness and insight into your own specific situation and distilling down uh, some value to you that you can apply and use in your life so that you can have a better life and that's really what we're talking about today is your vision the vision for your life I want you to be so happy. I want you to be so healthy. I want you to be rich. I want you to be wealthy. I want you to have a fulfilling career and purpose and all these things because why? Why do I want these for you? I want it for myself. I want it for everybody. <clears throat> when you're a happier person, when you're living the life of your dreams, you want other people to do the same. And that positive energy is the ripple effect throughout all the universe. It's the vibration that you send out. You know, as the saying goes, hurt people, hurt people. The people who are angry, who are like nasty that you know. And of course, you I mean, it's not that hard to, to look around for like people that spread, you know, hate and negativity and judgment, all these things. You think those are like really, really happy people who are just like knocking it out of the park in all areas of their life? It's a possibility, I guess, but I would say probably not. You know, if you think of someone who's really successful and really happy, oh my God, that car behind me just hit that other car. Oh, dang. Let's see if they stop. Oh no, that yellow, you guys see that in the background? That yellow car hit the car next to me. Let's see if they get out. There's no one in the car next to me. Oh, dang. Man, talking about distractions. We're going to have to make a whole video about distractions. You guys saw that though, huh? That's trippy. Um, all about distractions, man. But we're going to stay on it. So the reason why I think it's so important that you live the life of your dreams and why I want it so bad for you is your positivity, the positive vibration, the fulfillment that you have will ripple throughout time in all dimensions, all aspects. And you have no idea how and who that will affect again going back to the hurt people hurt people happy people help people i, I guess that sounds kind of good huh i didn't think about that anyways hurt people hurt people happy people help people think about all the people in your life when you encounter someone who's truly a self-actualized person a self-realized person or who is at least on the journey who is positive who's really crushing it imagine asking them for help what do you think they're going to want to do you think they're gonna want to like put you down and say no 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 that you ain't we ain't doing that like I'm not gonna help you absolutely not they are going to want to help you one of the things I think is funny right again you guys hear me use these examples a lot uh fitness and in the gym and stuff when you go to the gym for the first time and you haven't worked out in a long time or maybe you've never worked out you've never been a gym person I understand how intimidating that can be. You feel, you're going in there because you feel terrible about yourself. You have low self-esteem. You're like overweight. Your clothes don't fit right. You don't want to be seen. You wear a big old sweater and a hat and like just want to hide in the corner because you think everyone's looking at you. And the reality is one, no one really is. And then you look at these really fit people and you think that they're like the meanest people in the world and that they're so self-centered and egotistical. And some of them, sure, some of them are, you know, but that's their own insecurity trying to Right, they're trying to uh, cover up their own insecurities by creating a, a fault, uh, this physique and exterior. That's another subject. <laughs> the reality is, when you step into the gym and you are, and this is actually ninety nine percent of people, and even those people who are, you know, egotistical and stuff, they probably still would. I mean, whatever. Some would help you. Most would help you. Some wouldn't. I get it. Anyways, my point is. The people that you see in the gym that are so ripped and shredded, this girl that you're like, gosh, dang, look how amazing she is. She looks so incredible. This dude that's all jacked and ripped and cut, they, they might walk around, they got their shoulders out and their chest out. I guarantee if you're in the gym and you're a newbie and you're like real uncomfortable, but you go and you ask this dude who's like real jacked and real ripped and be like, hey man, like you can tell like I'm just getting started. Like you look amazing. Like what do you think I should do? I 
I guarantee it. I mean, seriously, 99 out of 100 people are going to be so happy to help you. They're going to actually be joyful about that because they're in a good place and they want to help you. And chances are they've been there before in some way, shape or form. We all actually want to help each other. So I use that example, but I wanna get stay on topic today. It, it, it matters though, right? Uh, this is why my vision is so important to help you with your vision. And that's really the point I wanted to make is because we're all better. A rising tide raises all ships, right? So that's why your vision is so important. Your life, your desires, what you want, it all starts with a vision. Starts with a vision, a mental vision to be clear. It starts with a mental vision. It's in your mind. Stephen R. Covey, the author of The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People says, start with the end in mind. And that always stuck with me. Start with the end in mind. The end is your vision. What's it gonna be like when you are rich, when you have the partner of your dreams, when you're traveling the world, when you're super fit and healthy? What is your life gonna be like? Who are you gonna be at that point? Much different from the person you are now. All things are created twice. There's a mental or first creation and a physical or second creation to all things. So your vision is very important and this is the starting point to you improving your life because when you know where you're going, you can start doing the things and understanding the things that you're doing if they're either in alignment with where you're going or if they're not. So an example would be, I really want to get in shape. Okay, great. Now you have a vision. People, and here's the thing, clarity is so important. People used to always say that to me you know, on our first session on the um, free introduction or whatever. And they go, uh, you know, what, what are your goals? What would you like to achieve? I want to get in shape. That's awesome. Like, what does that mean to you? Well, you know, I just want to like, you know, kind of tone up here and like, you know, get in shape. That doesn't really tell me much. So you got to get crystal clear on your vision. And I would always ask them this. I'd say, okay, look, you've got to be clear on what you want or else it's going to be very hard for us to get there. I want to lose uh, 15 pounds within three months and go down two dress sizes so that I can get ready for a wedding. I want my arms to be completely toned. I want to be able to see my midsection. I want my butt and legs to be firm to the touch. Very different than, oh, you know, I just kind of want to lose a couple of pounds and like very different. So the power in your vision depends on the clarity that you can create with that vision. You've got to get crystal clear, crystal clear and detailed, okay? So everything is created first in your mind and as it is created in your mind, then we can begin to move or be pulled in that direction. And the more clear you get, the more powerful it becomes because the more visceral it becomes. You can feel it, you can taste it, you can see it in your mind, you can smell it, you can feel it, you know it. What is it gonna be like? How are you going to feel when you go down two pant sizes, dude? And now all of a sudden you wear a t-shirt and your arms and shoulders are bulging out and your coworkers are like, dude, what have you been doing? What is going on? What are you up to, man? You look incredible. What's it gonna look, what, how are you gonna look when you look in yourself in the mirror when you get out of the shower and you're like, dang, dude, okay. Incredible, so crystal clear on your vision creates that feeling, that emotion. That is the key, the key to your vision. Now, the first thing we do is we identify what you want. I wanna get in shape, I want a chiseled six pack, I want my shoulders to pop out, I wanna to go to the beach with my kids and look amazing and look like a fit dad. I don't wanna be a dad bod and all chubby and stuff. I wanna be able to pick both my kids up on the shoulders and then put them to sleep and then go put my wife to sleep and have energy for all that, you know what I mean? Dude, crystal clear. I wanna have energy to go to work all day. I wanna wake up energized. I don't wanna feel all sluggish and be eating crappy food. I want to be, I wanna feel alive. I want to look in the mirror. I wanna hear compliments from people. See how we're engaging the, sense, the senses? You get crystal clear on your vision in your mind and then we start to bring it all together by engaging your senses. Now, what is it you want first? And then second, why is it you want this? Are you really wanting this for the right reasons? And here, this is an important step because it's got to be 
an authentic heart-centered reason why for instance i want to get in shape because i want to be jacked and ripped on the beach uh so i can use and sleep with a bunch of women that's not you're never gonna get there man or you might actually that might you know but like that's not like a good authentic vision or i want to get ripped and in shape so i can feel good about myself and attract a woman that i deserve to have in my life so we can create an amazing harmonious partnership very different energies so you got to understand the reasons why you're doing this i want to i want to get rich and have a big old business so i could show all them haters why okay that's a valid reason why and you can get there but think about that energy you're coming from anger you're coming from revenge and so the energy you create with why you want to develop this vision is also very important i shared with you in the beginning why i want to be successful in my vision and help you with your vision because i want people to be happier and positive and more fulfilling and healthier because that raises a positive vibration so we don't got all this hate and judgment and crap in the world and we all don't have to deal with all this crap that's everywhere man and it's very important to me as a, opposed to uh, I want you to have your vision so I can be rich and famous and like be a public figure dude that's all about me no you'll know your vision is authentic and real to you because if it's only benefiting you then you're not going to help many people you probably won't be that successful but if you really are authentically your vision is this because you want to help people I want to uh, one of my friends Ashley I want to become one of the most well-known figures uh, when it comes to battling eczema because I've had such a terrible time with it and it impacted my life negatively. I don't want other people to go through that. That's authentic. That's something near and dear to your heart. I want to really help people personally because I know how much pain I've been through and what I've had to overcome and freak, man. I don't want anyone to do that. That's why I make these videos. So why do you want it? What do you want? crystal clear on what you want now why do you want it is this authentic is it going to bring happy and fulfillment in your heart as a result of you helping other people you're right on track you want to do it for ego reasons cool you can probably still do it man um you, you really can a lot of people do that right they create from anger i'm gonna show all them haters wrong so I'm, now i'm a millionaire look at me now what but like think about that energy you're living with now is that real fulfillment like you got revenge okay cool man that's temporary or at least in my experience it has been what's important for your vision once we get clear clarity on it and then ask yourselves why am i really doing this you want to use the senses we have five senses we have a lot more than five senses but the five senses we know you see you think you feel you taste you smell you touch and this is very important for you when we do the visualization exercise and we'll talk about it uh, book by a gentleman named Neville Goddard called Feeling is the Secret. When you feel what it's like to be at the end goal of your vision, now you're being pulled forward. There's an alignment going on. Your senses, your touch, your vision is a physical manifestation of something that was created in your mind. So when you can engage the physical senses, it pulls you towards that vision. It starts to make it real. It starts to make it tangible. It helps with your beliefs. It really pulls you forward. It puts you in synchronous, uh, synchronistic uh, alignment with the universe. Very important. Feeling is the secret. What's it going to feel like when you're super fit? You're going to feel amazing. You're going to feel confident. You're going to feel relaxed. You're not going to be as anxious or depressed. You're going to feel humbled by all the hard work it took. You're going to feel so respectful of other people who aren't in shape because you've been there. You're going to feel way different. You're going to be a different person. What's it feel like? Engage the senses. Feeling is a secret. What's very important when you go into your visualization, and, and we'll talk about it, and I have some exercises and things too that I wrote down, you have to relax. So before you start to visualize what it's going to be like, you have to get yourself into a chill and relaxed state. The fight or flight or rest and digest most people are always on guard they're in the fight or flight and if you're in the fight or flight that's your body having its armor up and your guard up if you have your armor and your guard up you can't penetrate the subconscious mind you have to
really get zen with it in your mind and physically in your body we all know people like this maybe you see just walk around all this tension up here and don't even realize it uh, you gotta relax loose be like water be like butter chill out melt you gotta be with your guards and your heart open and your body relaxed okay you gotta be relaxed as you visualize because when you're relaxed and you visualize now you're reprogramming your subconscious mind you're literally sending a different signal to your physical body that this is what we're gonna do this is what I want how good does it feel to be relaxed and happy when you think about those things and you can feel it with your senses now we're getting somewhere now we're creating a powerful force a powerful energy that's all within you in order to create that which you desire so that you can be more positive happy loving fulfilled person and raise the vibration which is why you're here light worker it's what we do it's especially hard for you because all the past traumas all the past hurts the betrayals uh the subconscious beliefs that have come with that they got you working against you man so this is how we flip it around little by little we start to turn it around all of a sudden these little things start to become common practice it starts to become you you become your vision visualize using the senses so notice in the title today's video the title said your vision the power that pulls you forward not the power that pushes you forward I'm very intentional with my words or I do my best to be because the words have power use them wisely we talked about that your vision the power that pulls you forward not pushes you forward what's the difference there very clear distinction when you're pushing something how much effort is there when you're pushing towards something how much effort is there the visual that I get is the dude pushing the boulder up the mountain how much effort is that now imagine yourself at the top of the mountain with other people or maybe even not other people maybe a little pulley system and you got the rope tied around the boulder and you're pulling it up on a pulley system sure you're still working it takes a lot of effort so what does this have to do with your vision when your vision is so powerful and you can feel it you can taste it you can smell it you can touch it you know it you can hear the sounds of what it's like when you're in the bahamas and the waves are crashing through and it's so crystal clear that power becomes so visceral you're being pulled forward it's effortless you're relaxed you're not sitting here struggling, grind all day, hustle hard, uh, sleep when I'm dead, hustle all day, hustle all night, sleep when I'm dead. Dude, that sounds terrible. Who the F wants to do that? Rather than having something so crystal clear that you're in alignment and you're just being pulled by the flow, swimming upstream versus swimming downstream. Wouldn't you rather just be in an inner tube? knowing that you're going to this destination you got in the right stream and now you're just chilling in the inner tube with a little drink in your hand being guided being pulled down the river doesn't that sound better than here's this river and that's where you want to be and you're sitting here with the paddle struggling for your life trying to paddle upstream push versus pull develop something so powerful that's so near and dear to your heart that you can't help but be pulled in that direction that you're being woo, just guided mother nature baby just being relaxed in the flow in alignment we talked about that too your vision requires work but it'll be effortless at the same time because your vision has a lot to do with your joy because again when you're at the end destination and you're so happy that joy that's effortless man sis What's the thing that you do that's effortless that you are doing it when you're doing it four or five hours go by? And you're like, what the hell? It's been three and four hours? That's crazy. I felt like I just sat down. It should be effortless. Yes, it requires effort, 
but it doesn't feel like effort because it brings you so much joy. That's how you know you're on the right track. You're in the flow. You're in alignment. You're being pulled. You're being pulled because it's joyful. You're in the flow state. I mean, hours fly by. It doesn't feel like work. Again, I've shared this before. When I sit down and I'm writing my thoughts out, man, it's never a struggle for me. I don't filter myself. I don't hold my back. I just let the pen go to the paper and see what comes out. And I always write and get out all the crap that I'm dealing with first so I can clear the space. Without fail, it seems like since the couple weeks I've been doing this, every time I get out the crap and process my own you know, emotions, thoughts, feelings, past events, and I'm reflecting, looking for the insight, looking for the lessons I need to learn because I practice what I preach, man. This is where this stuff comes from. Almost without fail, something comes to me and I go, oh, that's what I'm supposed to talk about today. I don't plan anything. I get, it's funny because I'll get ideas about videos I should do throughout the day and they would be good videos. But when it's time to sit down, I'm like, I don't feel like talking about that. Nothing's coming to me. After I clear the space, something always comes to me and then all of a sudden it's a flow. It's easy and it's joyful. And then when I get on camera, I'm like excited. Like it's pleasurable. Like I enjoy teaching. I enjoy talking about these things, man. It's effortless for me. That's how it's got to be for you. Your vision is so powerful. It's effortless. You can feel it. You can taste it. You can touch it. You can smell it. You know it. One thing about developing your vision, there's a few things about it. It takes time and practice to develop your vision and to get into the flow for it to crystallize. It takes practice. This is swinging the golf club. This is shooting the basketball. This is learning a foreign language. This is learning how to cook. This is um, anything and everything you ever want to do. It all takes practice and time. Whatever you do right now for work, you weren't as good when you started as you are now. You practiced it. So developing your vision, it takes time and it takes practice to develop it. Once you get it, it's a beautiful thing, guys. The other thing about your vision, this is a living document. You have a clear idea and uh, direction that you want to go. It might completely change. It might change in a week. It might change in a month. It might change in six months. You might be a year into it trying to do this thing and all of a sudden a lot of variables have been changed. Now all of a sudden it looks different. This is a living document because what happens is when you go through the healing process and remove the blocks to clarify what it is you want, your preferences, your tastes, your approach, everything might change because you're changing. So it's a living document. So don't be afraid to make changes, but you've got to have a starting point. So whatever it is now, I want to do an arts and crafts store on Etsy. Awesome. I don't know what arts and crafts I want to do. That's okay. What would make you happiest making bracelets? Who cares if other people are doing it? That's all the more reason you should do it because people are already doing it. And the only reason you think you can't, it's oversaturated. Oh, you're a real estate agent. Everyone's a real estate agent. Dude, it's all, pe it's all limiting beliefs. There's enough for everybody. It's abundance. Dude, there's plenty to go around, sis. Your vision is a living document. Changes, small or big, there are no limits. If you gotta scrap it, scrap it. Do something different, it's fine. But the process of doing this is what's pulling you forward. This is leading you to a better life. And every step you're learning along the way and it changes, that's great. Every step you take, you're getting closer to where it is you want to really go and what's really true to your heart. Over time, it will become refined. Your vision will become refined. It will actually change. You should expect it to. And it will become refined because you got to think of it like Michelangelo's David. It's a big lump of stone in the beginning. You're just starting this process. You have an idea of what you want, but now you're getting crystal clear. As you get crystal clear, like, I thought his arm was going to be like this. Nope, now it's on his hip. Now we're doing this thing. You didn't know until you started chipping away. Dang, I thought that vein was going to, I thought it was bicep. I'm going to turn out. No, it's not turning out like that. We change. As you chisel and you get crystal clear, the lump of clay forms into a beautiful masterpiece. Once you get in that beautiful masterpiece, your senses are engaged. Oh man, watch the momentum that starts to happen in your life. It's beautiful. Now, this is important for your vision. You have to really know who you are. You have to develop your identity. And if you're watching this, again, you're probably light worker, you're starseed. You've been through a lot of crap we all have especially if you experience childhood trauma, abandonment, abuse, you were never given the space or time, certainly not the nurturing aspect of it 
to develop your own identity and who you really are. So you've got to work on healing and forgiving the past and understanding and becoming self-aware of the limiting beliefs that you have developed because of those experiences. Because if you think you want this, but you haven't really healed, it's probably not what you really want because you don't know who you really are because you never healed all the crap that stopped you from being who you really are because you didn't have a chance to develop your identity. It's my case from uh, all the abandonment and stuff that I face as a kid. No one told me nothing. It was just me alone in a room all the time. I've learned a lot and I've had to learn a lot of it from yes to help other people, but a lot was about learning it on my own. So I never really developed an identity. I was the master at being someone different for every group of people. I was so fake. I can get along with anybody because I I was a survival trauma it was a survival technique and a trauma survival mechanism from trauma learning how to adapt to every single environment so that I could always fit in with everyone so I never had to be unliked or unloved. And so I didn't have my own identity for a long time. I had bits and pieces of it, but I had to develop that and it took a lot of time and work to heal and all these things. You have to heal and develop your identity. If you don't know who you are past trauma because of past traumas and abuse, you weren't allowed to dream and you weren't supported in developing your identity. So you just don't know who you are because you always had to be someone else. You were some you were you're someone now who is always told who to be, who to be and you conform to that because if you weren't who that person or that group of people wanted you to be, they didn't love you. You didn't so then you know, you get screwed because of that. So we you learned how to conform. You never get to be, you never got to be yourself. And then also you probably don't you might not think it's possible. You're like, "Oh, there's no way that I can do this because I don't think it's possible." In yesterday's video, we talked about the limiting beliefs exercise, right? About writing out your goal. What are my limiting beliefs? Where did these come from? What's a new empowering belief to replace that old one? About your vision. This is hard ass work. This is hard ass work. Make no joke about it and it's inner work which is, it's emotional work. It's, it's, this is, it's deep, man. It's so freaking hard. I swear the times that I've had emotional breakthroughs would leave me more exhausted than if I did, you know, four workouts a day of running and lifting weights nonstop, any way more exhausted than any physical workout I could ever do. Emotional, this deep stuff, this deep work is exhausting. Getting tired thinking about it, man. Woo. Anyways. It takes time. You've got to be patient. For me, my vision came about 10 years ago. I did this course and for whatever reason, I had this vision and this clarity of like, oh, this is what I should do. This is who I am. And it was been ups and downs of like, is that what I want? I don't want to do that anymore. That's not really me. I don't want to do it. But it's funny. You'll know it's your right vision too, because no matter how hard you try to like avoid it or move into different things, you'll always have this calling that comes back in your heart. So mine is writing, speaking, right? Clearly this is, this is part of it. This is a piece of it, but that's what I'm like meant to do. It just has not, it hasn't gone away no matter what I've been going through in my life for the past 10 years, ever since this vision first came to me. And it came because I did a lot of inner work on myself about healing my traumas and finding out who I am or who I want to be. And then therefore my heart spoke to me and said, bro, this is who you, this will make you, this is, will make you the happiest and most fulfilled. It might not take that long. Everyone is different. We're all in different stages of healing and process. So, but again, don't be attached to the time. It really doesn't matter. And think about it this way. Time doesn't matter when it comes to your vision. You're 45, you're 50. Okay, great. You think it's too late. That's a limiting belief. I've gotten people that have come and trained with me at 66 years old and trained with me for a year or two and are in the, they literally... I'm in the best shape of my life at 68. I wasn't even like this in my 20s. And I've done that multiple times with multiple people. Age does not matter. Your vision, it's never too late to get started. It doesn't matter. That's a limiting belief. That's what your program, that's what society wants you to think so that you're not happy so they can keep the vibration low. No, dude, it doesn't matter. If it takes you five years and you're 50 and you think it's too late, no, are you kidding me? You know how much life experience and wisdom you have? and how much faster it'll probably go when you apply that wisdom that someone in their 20s doesn't have? It's perspective. And if you're 20 and you're like, dang, dude, 10 years, that's crazy. 
Sis, bro, you start at 20 years old? Takes you 15 years. You're 35? You're 35, your life hasn't even started yet. And you're living the life of your dreams at 35. How many people at 35, 40, 50, 60, you wish they could go back 70 and above, whatever, look back and go, oh my God, I wish I was 35 and figured this stuff out. Time is irrelevant. So it doesn't matter your age. More importantly, during this process of you developing and pursuing and creating, not pursuing, you developing and creating your vision, the person you become is the most important part. The invaluable experiences and lessons you become. It's about reclaiming your power. You start mastering the art and the science of creation because you become that. You have a process of how to go about this. Imagine that. At 35, at 40, you start at 20. It takes you 20 years. Imagine the person you'll be at 40. Crazy. 40 is young as hell. Imagine the rest of your life. You have to live as that person. Oh my gosh. You know what you're like. You've made money. You help people. You have an amazing family. You can do whatever you want. Because you went on this journey. It might take you 20 years. But what if it took you 20 years. But then you live the rest of your life in complete bliss and full power and potential time is irrelevant three quotes about vision your vision will become clear only when you look into your own heart who looks outside dreams who looks inside awakens carl jung love carl jung second quote vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others people are not going to see your vision they're not going to care about it It's supposed to be that way. It's your vision. It's not theirs. So it doesn't matter. This is where that video comes in. You build and move in silence. Because nobody really cares. And some people don't want you to succeed anyways. It's just the truth of it, man. Especially when you're really aligned. Gotta trust that. The last one, Helen Keller. The only thing worse than being blind is having sight, but no vision. It's a mic dropper right there, man. Helen Keller, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. Before we pull um, our Oracle card of the day, I was thinking about it and why this came to me today. I was thinking about like, what's the first thing that I want to do for people, um, you know, that will help me and also you guys. I've been having this download for a couple of days now. So I'm going to the first, I think product or I'm, I don't know if I'll do, I'm sure at some point I'll do coaching again, but that's going to be, I, I don't know. That'll be a ways down, but I was thinking about what I could create that would really support you guys in harmony with, um, a lot of the things that we talk about here. And it's going to be a combination ebook guided meditation on vision, because if you don't have your vision, we don't have that starting point. There's nothing Like we don't know what we're working towards. So even if you, even when I coach people, the thing we always start with is vision. And so, um, man, I'm, I'm obviously recording this on my phone, give you a little insight onto it. So it's going to be called something like a vision quest, your guide to a better life or something like that. That sounds a little cheesy. So probably won't be that. But anyways, the name is irrelevant. It's going to be a short ebook on vision about you developing your, uh, developing your vision what are the blocks that are in the way? How do I develop my division? How do I tap into my intuition and my heart, understand what I want? What are the limiting beliefs about that? How do I overcome these limiting beliefs? What are the factors in my life about how to go about this so I can pragmatically and practically put this into place depending on my current circumstances? And then it'll include a guided meditation, I believe, that uh, I'm gonna, yeah, and that seems right and most powerful so that I can take you through this guided meditation experience and where I can guide you to be in that final place of your vision. Um, and then you'll, you'll start having all these crazy things happen in your life. Crazy, good, crazy, good things happen in your life. Um, and it's, but it's going to be uncomfortable because in order for you to be that person and go that way, you have to let go. But I don't know when it'll be ready. I, like I said, it's just the download came to me over this past week. And then today it really hit home that this is what I'm supposed to talk about. Cause a lot of these videos I'm talking about at limiting beliefs and being in alignment and flow, it's all because I have a vision and I'm moving forward and so do you. 
So these are the things and the steps along the way that we talk about in order for you to achieve that vision so you can have a greater life, so you can raise the collective consciousness, you can heal your family and friends around you just by being you because you have a higher vibration, because you're happier, you're inspiring other people because they're like, dang, look at them, they did it. So anyways, all these things together. So we pulled the Oracle card today. And it's funny, before I pulled the Oracle card, I got a message and um, some person that left this message, they're like, dude, you had me, you're spitting facts until you pulled the Oracle cards, read your Bible. And I think it's so funny <clears throat> that you know a lot of the a lot of the people that will say this and right and it's no, no judgment for me i'm here to bring light and enlightenment and awareness to the situations right they're like um i've talked about this before i think a lot of people get turned off by oracle cards because they're like oh man it's witchcraft it's occult but it's only a negative connotation that you have programmed into your mind from the collective that oh this is bad or all we're doing is connecting with spirit. And then the funny thing was he's like, read your Bible. And I'm like, bro, the cards are the archangel power tarot, tarot cards. Archangels are biblical figures. Like, what do you mean? What is there to be scared of? So it's, you know, but there's this negative connotation about, you know, oh, tarot cards, Oracle. you know, that's like the Ouija board. We're inviting a demonic experience. What these people don't realize, and if this is you, that's fear. This is fear in your mind. What do you there's nothing to be scared of. There's no fear, but you're being triggered. These are triggering fear within you. So this is a block that you have and a way that you're viewing the world that, oh, everything is fearful. So if you're fearful on the inside, you're seeing fear on the outside, you're creating more fear in your life. So you gotta be aware of these things. I'm just bringing it to light. And again, in the end, maybe it doesn't resonate with you and that's all good. You can click off and take what resonates with you and it's all gravy. I don't care. I don't take it personally. <clears throat> this is something that has been supportive of me where I connect with my angels, with my guides, where without fail, and if you this does resonate with you, some of the cards I pulled, I don't make this stuff up. They're in divine alignment with the messages that we're speaking. <clears throat> but your angels, your oracle guide, uh, your, your guides, the ascended masters, your earth guides, you know, uh, God, all, all that is, whatever you conceive him or her or it to be, it's all gravy. You know, some of you guys, um, somebody asked me about what crystals I wear and stuff and I'll make videos on crystals. That video might turn you off like a mother and that's all good. You take what resonates with you and you move on. Oh, let me uncross my ankles because I want to be completely open. Tap three times on the cards we clear the energy we ask for the purest the most divine truth in your highest good and the highest good of the collective deep breath clear the air clear the energy that's the one that jumped out we got two of them today so time's sake i'm only gonna oh man i'm okay right, okay we're gonna do two of them today this is what popped up and i'm like dang okay clearly yeah they're telling me you gotta share both these so the first one is the eight of ariel Look at the picture first, what pops out to you, whatever pops out to you first, you take that and use your own discernment intuition on what the downloads that you are getting are. The message is take pride in your excellent work. Practice makes perfect. Consider getting additional education or training. So maybe your vision requires you to learn a new skill set that you don't have. This is confirmation to pursue that education. Take pride in the excellent work that you've already done practice makes perfect we talk about you've got to practice developing your vision the practice the skill of inner sight discernment seeing your vision aid of ariel you're doing excellent work you take great pride in what you do the energy and effort you put into your work financially supports you and also feels very rewarding if you're considering changing jobs or careers it will go very well talking about creating a vision you're probably not doing the same work you're doing in your vision as you are now there's a great motivation to be a success and your willingness to invest in your long-term goals will pay off vision this takes time long-term success is where you're going there's so much to learn this job this card often indicates job training going back to school or attending seminars or creative classes a choice you need to make might benefit from more research additional meanings of this card students artisans practice makes perfect perfect message for today's video man 10 seminars classes we're talking about and then again like like i said i'm a i'm i know now this is my confirmation i got to create this uh ebook and this guided meditation i have no idea when it'll happen and stuff but obviously i'll share it with you guys so 11 
part 11 strength archangel ariel i get it read the bible what do you know about archangel ariel i love you guys man please just take what resonates and it's all gravy you know it's not gonna all hit with everybody the lion the courage that's what sticks out to me the sun nature oh can't wait to be back home and chilling on the grass with my dog nature strength strength the strength card strength and grace through kindness self-confidence forgiveness have confidence you can do this forgive the past to release your limitations allow your vision to pull you forward strength and grace through kindness be kind to yourself be kind to yourself first when you're kind to yourself you'll start to be kind to others and if you're angry i get it man but ain't nobody hurting from that anger but you or other people are too but anyways i'm getting off topic anyways i'm gonna stay on topic so strength you have great strength and compassion. The kindness and understanding that you give to others are a blessed gift. However, it is equally important to show gentleness towards yourself. You may see aspects within you that cause you worry or impatience, but every person is a child of God. It is by balancing all aspects of yourself with love and mercy that you learn to exhibit those same qualities to people around you. You are far stronger than you may believe. The situation you find yourself in requires a very soft and sensitive approach. Archangel Ariel can help you stay strong in the face of any challenge. It's going to be challenges as you pursue or as you create your vision and are pulled by it, as you develop this inner, there's going to be a lot of challenges, a lot of growth. Again, we talked about that yesterday. Your challenges are meant to shape you the tough times in life. Additional meanings of the card, self-confidence, patience, self-control, forgiveness, inner strength and influence through kindness. That's what I got for you guys today. Love you so much. I appreciate you. Man, I've got some stuff to reflect on because in the last like two minutes of this video, now it's bringing up some interesting energy in me about stuff that I might've been triggered by. So we learn through self-reflection. That's what I got for you guys. Love you so much. I'll see you next time. Peace.